it was very hard to live in a country with a very obvious authoritarian regime. We had only some problems with authority. I don't know why I stayed alive. The country pretty much collapsed. So we stood and stood and stood and stood. Something clicked, like something changed. People just started to think differently. And so we came to what now people call the miracle of uh, self-organization. Even though it's still very hard, you could feel that there's change. Don't think it's so easy to impress people here. They have something to live for. You do whatever you want. That's why we have so many cool things happening. You have maximum freedom you can. Voir le monde autrement, de plus près, c'est ce que vous allez faire. Découvrir une ville méconnue toute une nuit à travers le regard de cinq de ses habitants. Voici One Night in Kiev. Avec trois révolutions en 30 ans, une guerre à l'est du pays dont tout le monde se fout. La ville sent encore l'URSS, mais rêve de devenir européenne. Dans l'imaginaire, Kiev fait plutôt penser à ça. Neuf jours après l'accident de la centrale nucléaire de Tchernobyl, les téléspectateurs soviétiques ont vu ce soir pour la première fois depuis la catastrophe ces images de la région de Tchernobyl. La soirée commence donc chez Danilo, au Barbacane. Originally, the place was thought up as a place where artists can come and have a chat and have a drink and get drunk and watch football and do it within their own crowd. So we thought to and make a place for art exhibition, for art gatherings, for drinking and being allowed to smoke inside. It's a place where friends gather. Good uh, my name is Danilo Kovjun and I invite you to the Art of Barbacana in the of project One Night in Kiev. Of course, the place is connected with Maidan. When they started the gathering on Maidan, most of our friends were there. And when the students, unarmed, were there and the police beaten them up, a crowd from here was already dressed in ski helmets, anticipating a massacre. We were always a step ahead. The owner of the place visualized in 3D a construction from um, uh, loading pallets and OSB uh, plates. We all met on Maidan. We took the, the line in the middle of the street, hammered the nail inside, and from there we did all the measurements. So we were dead center of the street, right in front of uh, Krishatik metro station. Zakhadi. The place itself was more a headquarter than a bar anymore. We were sleeping there between night shifts. We had um, a roster and we had glass jars along the walls. One of our artists is actually a PhD in chemistry. So the cocktails we made were burning very hotly and you couldn't put the fire away. Pour comprendre Maidan, il faut revenir sur la révolution orange 10 ans auparavant. Orange Revolution, we knew the elections were fake. We stepped out and said, that's a fake recount. We want that guy instead of that guy. What did they do? They recounted in the end. We got that guy instead of that guy. Everybody went, we can go home now. And then people who went to power with Orange Revolution just started doing whatever their previous people were doing. And it led us nowhere. But again, it gave us the feeling that things can be changed. Obviously, there was no chance for Maidan for about 10 years after the Orange Revolution. And then all of a sudden we had this. And here they didn't do what we wanted. So we stood and stood and stood and stood. And we had no real leader. And then after another couple of weeks, we came to understanding we don't need a leader. We can discuss and come to agreement between ourselves. And so we came to what now people call the miracle of uh, self-organization on Maidan. Тим был холодный, а я влюблен 
Et alors que le calme revient sur Maïdan, la guerre éclate à l'Est. Certains comme Danilo ont décidé de poursuivre l'effort en rejoignant le front. Il est temps de décoller, direction le Kosatka. C'est là que se retrouve la jeunesse aisée, cool et créative de la ville, à l'image de Dana. Justement, Dana connaît très bien Nastia. Quelques messages plus tard, c'est donc chez elle que se poursuit la soirée. So I'm 29 years old, Ukrainian female DJ who is traveling around the world, making people happy, uh, playing many parties and living a happy life. Hello, this is Nastya from Ukraine and you're watching to One Night in Kiev. You know what makes my love to Ukraine bigger is the way people party here. When I come here to play and I see those ravers, and it's, it's maximum exciting for me. Because people are not spoiled, because people are just got into this vibe. They really care what they wear, how they look like, uh, what time they come, how long they stay. And it's also nice that we in Ukraine we don't have a limit like a low to cut to shut down the party in like nine in the morning or whatever so you don't feel limits no one disturbs you you have maximum freedom you can you do whatever you want we have a great really great resident djs most of the times they are much better than the artists they bring even me when i come to play here i was like i need to be so good that after that these guys they're gonna respect me you know don't think it's so easy to impress people here in Kiev they really understand what they want and what they need mm -hmm. 
I think uh, many things have changed since the uh, last revolution. It became much more free and open-minded. People just started to think differently, you know, and this what actually helps to move uh, forward everything what we want to have in a good quality, you know, uh, club culture, uh, art, uh, um, exhibitions, anything. It just grows, and uh, yeah, and I'm I'm very proud to be Ukrainian. <laughs> Un mot est revenu toute la soirée. Closer. Closer. The closer. They have constant trouble with police. Well, police has a constant trouble with them, but they're the pl best place, best place to come to if you're in for electronic music. Et il est temps d'aller voir ça de plus près. Closer is quite a scene, you know. I percept closer not as much as a space, but more like an ideology. Let's say it's an art center, but uh, with the basis of nightlife, of music. Closer was created very naturally by the people who just loved to dance, to make parties, to play music. We were all like big fans of dance music and uh, we didn't have a place actually in Kiev where we could play this music. So we started just doing parties and we called them Closer. I'm uh, Timur Basha, I'm a co-founder of Closer and uh, you're watching One Night in Kiev. Our first party was taking place in an abandoned restaurant and around eight people came. It was a free entrance. We just wanted to dance. The party was so nice. It felt so much like home that uh, I want to make another one just right away. As I said, we never did closer in a club because every club has its own atmosphere. We needed an empty space to create our own atmosphere. And uh, the ideology of this uh, atmosphere is actually the freedom. When you enter the party, you are not a man of uh, a certain age, religion, views, skin color, profession, money that you earn. You are just a human who came here for music and you are sure that everyone else is here for the same reason. Après Nastya et après le Barbakan, ça parle à nouveau de liberté. The nightlife gets more underground and more sincere, I would say. There are Schema and Rhythm Bureau and many other good uh, projects and they're very successful now. For now we had only some problems with authority. We hope that someday authorities will hear us. I'm not talking about the music. Maybe they will not understand the music that we are doing, but uh, at least they will understand that uh, it's a big part of Ukrainian culture. It uh, attracts the people from all over the world. That attracted you, for example, to talk to me right now. It's a good sign of civilization. Il est 7h30, il est temps de conclure la soirée autour d'un petit déjeuner avec Victor. Ну, я выходец из Советского Союза. У меня техническое образование, которое я потом дополнил ещё журналистикой. У меня не было желания фотографировать. Но я начал фотографировать для того, чтобы выйти из социума, а фотография в Советском Союзе была такой независимой профессией. То есть я выбирал между сапожником и фотографом. А? Меня зовут Виктор Марущенко, я фотограф, основатель школы фотографии, преподаватель. Вы смотрите проект «Одна ночь в Киеве». То есть я аутодидакт, и я начал фотографировать сразу для газет, и у меня как-то сразу получилось. И потом я попал на работу в Москву, в газету, которая это была газета для всего Советского Союза, она называлась «Советская культура». И я в ней проработал до 91 года, но в 89-м я уехал в Швейцарию, и в Швейцарии я в музей Дейлизе в Лозанне я показал фотографии и попал сразу на выставку в 90-м году. 100 фотографов из Восточной Европы. И потом эту выставку у меня купили. И это мне как бы способствовало тому, что я там остался. 
Ну, в 2001 году я попал в Венецию со своими снимками. И в 2004 году попал в Сан-Паулу. Après avoir voyagé toute sa vie, il a ouvert en 2004 une école pour transmettre son expérience. Все хотят научиться фотографировать, но ну, никто не создает пространство для фотографий, не создает галереи, не печатает книги, не делает выставки. Отложите фотоаппарат, займитесь пространством, в котором эта фотография может жить. Я могу сказать, что Киев это город, в который всегда приятно возвращаться. Но пока что я не вижу тут возможности для того, чтобы тут полноценно выстроить жизнь, потому что тут достаточно сложно. И люди отчаиваются, молодые, даже образованные, не знают, чем заниматься. И вопрос даже не в том, что трудно работу найти, а в том, что нет дальнейшего роста. Да, вырасти очень тяжело. Поэтому я всегда говорю о том, что нужно уезжать, но возвращаться нужно потом сюда. И если Виктор это aussi сэрб, это он знает, о чем он говорит. С женой берлинской и двумя детьми в Зимбабве, он рассказывает aussi un peu свою собственную историю. Я первый раз выехал в 40 лет тогда в Швейцарию. И я вам скажу, что, конечно, ощущение вот этого железного занавеса было очень сильным. Поэтому я думаю, что любой человек постсоветский должен понимать, что мир большой, возможности нужно искать во всем мире свои. Но Киев остается родиной и местом, где у тебя может быть близкие, дом, да, может быть, и, и прочее, и прочее. Qui vient nuancer les rêves et les espérances des rencontres précédentes. Kiev fascine, ses habitants aussi. Ils se sont ouverts et vous ont partagé leurs histoires, leurs doutes et leurs espoirs. Ceux d'une ville qui se cherche, qui tente, qui explore, d'une ville qui vit au rythme d'une guerre qui n'en finit pas et qui semble pourtant bien lointaine. Sure.